All right, last thing I want to talk about here is the wide receiver position. Making headlines, obviously, uh, recently, because the Pittsburgh Steelers currently have five wide receivers on the roster. Those are Deontay Johnson, George Pickens, Calvin Austin, Gunnar Olszewski, and Anthony Miller, who I continue to forget when listing their wide receivers. They have not. The only wide receiver I've heard that has been on their radar is Mac Hollins. He ended up elsewhere. Where where do you go from here? You look at the Pittsburgh Steelers. They need a slot guy. You've been pushing that the whole time. We went over free agency a little bit before the show. There's not many names there. I think Jarvis Landry is the only one that people have taught, tossed out. If not, it's the NFL draft. Do you look at a guy like Jarvis Jones? Do you look at a different name in free agency? Or do you just say, there are no veterans to go sign. You got to go NFL draft. Yeah, I don't really think that there's a lot of good options out there on the free agency market. Um, the one name that I was able to find, like when just doing some research before the pod was Richie James. James played last year for the giants. Uh, he had a career year, 650 yards, four touchdowns um, working with Daniel Jones. He played 85% of his snaps in the slot. So um I've watched James a little bit um, as the season went on, just because I was really impressed by how the Giants were able to be a self-sufficient offense with a lack of receivers. Um, but James is a guy who can really uncover pretty quickly underneath, you know, option routes, you know, those drag routes, um, quick hitters, stuff like that. Like he knows how to create separation at the top of his route. Um you know, I think he's an interesting player. He was really productive in college, if I remember correctly. He kind of got off to a slow start to his career in San Fran, um, dealt with some injuries, but he's a good player. I, I think that his market must be pretty low just yeah. based on, you know, the fact that he's still unsigned. You know, he's a smaller guy, but I, I definitely wouldn't mind bringing him in, uh, depending on the price point, assuming that it was pretty uh, – pretty cheap but do you see an outside option do you see any because right now they have no depth on the outside do you see i mean you can't just play deontay george every single play i would like to bring i, I would like to bring back miles boinkin i i agree i think that miles might have a larger contract than the steelers want to give up maybe or maybe i think they're looking at i think that was my thing about mac hollins is he's a good special teamer but he's more of a pass catcher than boykin is and I think that they were interested in that. It didn't happen, which has me thinking maybe they're looking for a name that has better offensive ability. Not, not that I think Boykin and Gunner, the reason that I want them both on the Pittsburgh Steelers this season is because they were phenomenal run blockers, like phenomenal run blockers. And just to toss them out there and give extra hands for Najee Harris in that offensive line, I thought worked wonders. But if they're looking for more of a receiving threat, I mean, that's when that's when it gets gets questionable. And I don't think you could double down in the in the NFL draft. I don't think you could, you know, look at two wide receivers. And nobody wants to toss out like OBJ and those kinds of names. That's not happening. That's not happening. But do you, I mean, I don't even know who Marcus Johnson maybe would be an outside guy. But even even Richie James that you said is a slot guy. There's not really many outside guys available that I think have the ability to play special teams and the outside as well as Boykin. So I guess he could be an option. Um, yeah, it's it's just really thin on the market right very now. Thin. Like guys that are available really don't make a ton of sense for, for the Steelers just from a cost or age perspective. You know, this, this, I mean, there's big names out there, you know, your Julio's, you know. Yeah, but what's OBJ. Julio these days? I mean, another guy that like – has some inside out versatility, Justin Watson from, from the chiefs. Yeah. He's only, he's only 28. I think maybe he could make some sense on a cheap deal, but I really do think it makes a lot of sense to bring Boykin back just for the special teams aspect of it. I mean, if nothing else, you know, you've got, you've got that kind of in the bag and that gives him a path to make the roster. Yeah. Do you see, uh, I knew Jarvis Landry was going to get tossed out there. Do you think Jarvis Landry is an actual possibility? Really? How far into free agency do we have to get before Jarvis Landry could even be thought of as a possibility? I don't know. Everybody was asking me this last year, and I, yeah, I, I think Landry's washed. Just to be completely oh, honest, he, like washed, washed. 
Yeah, I just I don't I don't I just don't I I wouldn't be really that interested in him. I mean, if if he signs for like cheap cheap, you know, just like a couple million, like it's not going to be something that I'm going to say is like the dumbest thing in the world. But um, I definitely don't think Jarvis is still like a very useful player on offense. You know, he was never an athletic player in general, but yeah. you know the fact that he's now older and has dealt with some injuries recently. Um, just not somebody that I'm particularly too interested in, but I, I don't know. We, I, I can't say never, you know, that's what I'm saying. Out of, if, if you don't have any names, like at this point, you got to start thinking maybe let's finish with this one. Marvin, Marvin Mims is a name you toss out there. You, you called him the most underrated guy in the draft. I'm almost positive that you called him the most underrated guy in the draft. Yeah. Do you think he's going to slide up boards or you think the Steelers should and could have their eyes on him? I I don't understand why why Mims isn't getting more hype in this class. I mean, he's been productive. He's one of the younger guys at his position. Um, you know, has legitimate four three four four speed. You know, vertical field stretcher, but he's got some legitimate ball skills to play through contact, win at the catch point. I don't really understand. I, I think he's a top ten receiver all day in this class. Um, but I'm still seeing you know him being mocked and day three territory and i just i think that's ridiculous for, Dude, for i haven't seen anybody put has. him in a day two i've not seen yeah. one mock yeah so i don't know i i know that he didn't uh he didn't meet with the steelers or he hadn't met with them yet at the combine um, was he going to did he have a formal with them i i know that he didn't have a formal with them but he i think i just asked him um at his podium and he said he hadn't met with them yet i'm not sure if he had anything set up with them or not but He's definitely a guy that I, I like. Um, I think, you know, just some of the stuff that he can do with the ball in his hands as well as, you know, just stretching the field vertically. I, I definitely um, I definitely think he's a good player. He's a player that deserves more hype in this class for sure. So answer this one real quick because you've explained this before. We should explain it again every time it's asked why Deontay Johnson does not work in the slot. So Deontay is – an X like I know everybody wants to make him in the slot because of the size thing, but Deontay is their best receiver by far against press coverage. He's one of the best receivers against press coverage in the league um, because of the way that he can get off the ball, him going in the slot really doesn't make a lot of sense because he's not very good in the middle of the field, especially underneath. You're asking a guy who's 180 pounds to work in a lot of traffic, and that's just been something that he's not really been that great at. Um, just if you look back to where a lot of his drops have occurred, it's been like, you know, on quick slants, drag routes, stuff over the middle of the field where there's just a lot of big bodies. Um, it just, to me, you know, you want your best route runner and your best guy against press at X, and that's, that's why he's going to stay out there. I mean, is there there's a potential that like maybe down the road Pickens could be that X, um, you know, if he continues to develop and they expand his route tree and, yeah. you know, I did, I did see some flashes against press coverage last year, but um, as of right now, Deontay is the X until, you know, somebody else takes it from him. And I just think that's going to be a difficult thing to do for somebody that's, you know, that good against press and that good of a route runner. So yeah, there's no, uh, you, the Steelers love Deontay Johnson, and he is probably, I mean, according to ESPN, he's the best route runner in football. So hard to beat that one. Stats don't lie. The analytics don't lie. Appreciate that one. I'm Quarterbacks gonna, like I'm guys that are wide open all the time. Who, what? Quarterbacks like guys that are wide open all the time. Love them. Love them. <laughs> yeah. And Kenny Pickett caught on to that. Like, it took him a little while, but before, you know, before anybody noticed, they're just like, oh, man, dude, Deontay is, like, always open. Like, it's. As long as I throw the ball early enough, the guy is wide open every single time. That's the guy to have if you – he's not going to catch a billion touchdowns, but he's going to get you the yards. And I think that uh, – I think that's what the Pittsburgh Steelers need. 